How to make the perfect patient technology? Probably this is a question many of you are asking. I will try in the next minutes to define what is the perfect patient technology and how can we reach that? And hopefully it will help some of you really to, to find this perfect technology. My name is Stanimir Hasrjiv and I'm uh, the Secretary General of the Patient Access Partnership, uh, also involved in several other organizations like CE for Health, the National Patients Organization in Bulgaria, and last but not least, uh, Admin Foundation, which is focusing on developing technologies for the patients. Why is this different and why I believe that uh, we can find the perfect technology? First of all, we need to talk why it, why it matters for patients to have the perfect technology. We all know that the technologies are going to change our lives, that they are going to help us to, have, to live longer, healthier. Actually, the perfect technology would provide cure, I must say. Every patient that has some problem would actually like to have the perfect technology to cure them. Nobody wants to be a patient. While we are searching for this magical technology, and I don't believe that it will happen any soon, uh, a technology that might treat you from, from everything at the moment when you ask it, uh, I think we can make the technologies to be better, to serve us, to manage our conditions, and uh, to live healthier lives in order to forget about the disease, if not possible to cure it, and to make our lives a bit easier and a bit more healthier. So what makes important the technology is actually this. They potentially can help us. How we make this perfect technology and what is really good technology from the patient point of view. First of all, let us see some of the hurdles and the barriers that currently uh, people are facing when uh, they uh, start talking about technologies. You probably know that only uh, a small percentage of all applications, of um, all innovation that is out there on the market is used by the people who need them. Why this happens? Is it because the technology is not good enough? Is it because some other reasons? I think the major issue is the, health, uh, the, the, the digital literacy and that the technologies very often are quite sophisticated. You have to know something, that the life of a patient and his healthcare professionals is already quite complicated. It's very complicated to be a doctor. It's even more complicated to be a patient. You have to uh, deal with all your symptoms, you have to deal with all your appointments, you have to uh, cope with uh, uh, um, the pain if you want, you have to cope with your colleagues, you have to explain to your children. It's really already complicated situation. Imagine on top of that, if the patient has to take care about new technology, new skills that he has to learn uh, and uh, um, more or less to go uh, to, to new courses or even to study how to work with a computer only to be able to capture his, uh, um, for example, blood sugar. You know better than me that many of the patients simply don't do that because, as I said, it's already too complicated for them. How can we overcome with this challenge? And what makes the technology really good? What matters for patient is something that uh, I will step on, on, on a saying uh, and words of Albert Einstein. You do not really understand something unless you can explain it to your grandmother. It's as simple as it is. If you are not able to give the technology to your grandmother and make her work with that technology without any efforts, then you have not done the perfect technology. So aim number one, we have to simplify the technology. We have to make it in a way that the user experience is simply natural. It's in the way that the people would simply start using this technology without even mentioning that it is technology and the technology is supposed to help them to help them live the healthier and better lives and to manage their diseases much better but 
say it so simple? Is it really so simple to find this technology and to bring it to the patient? Here we come uh, about a, a definition of access and how we make the technology accessible and when do we say that something is actually accessible for the patient. In the patient access partnership, we have developed the so-called five A's model. This five A's model explains some aspects of a product like any technology application or whatever you're developing. Uh, what are the five A's that this product should meet in order to be accessible for the patient? On first place, it's the availability. If you create a fantastic product or application that is simply not available for those who need it, then it doesn't make any sense for you to create this technology. So make it available for the people and for those who need it. The second one is actually adequacy. If you make the most sophisticated technology that is very nice looking, but it's not adequate, it doesn't really have continued supply, it's not adequate according to the real needs of, uh, of the patient, then it doesn't matter because at the end it's still not going to be used because it's not there when you need it. And then the third A is the physical accessibility. So regardless how good your technology it is, if it is not accessible, if it is not easy, if it is not easy to reach mm, uh, by those who need it, then it doesn't make any difference. And at, at the end, again, this is not going to be well accepted and used technology. The fourth A is a very, very important one. A technology, an innovation should be affordable. It doesn't matter how good it is, how appropriate is it, how adequate it is, how accessible it is, if it is not affordable and those who need it cannot uh, really uh, buy it, then still it's going to be just a nice jewelry somewhere, uh, somewhere there that nobody uses. And then last but not least, the appropriateness. Is it really a technology that uh, meets the real needs of the different patient populations and that is based on evidences and based to the current development of knowledge and science. So making appropriate technologies is uh, the, the fifth A of this five A definition of access. If any of these five A elements is not available there, then you cannot say that you have the perfect patient-centric technology. But when we talk about patient centricity, then how we define the patient centricity. It's very trendy. For the last decade and even more, people are talking about patient centricity. In the 2000s, um, actually, it was about patient's involvement. Then we needed to, to uh, convince everyone that we need to involve patients. So everyone started involving patients for the sake of involvement. Then we understood that uh, patient centricity and really involving the patients is simply not enough. It has to be meaningful patient's involvement. It needs to be at the right time and we have to have the right expectations from the patients. Nobody expects a patient to be an IT specialist and the patient shouldn't be unless he's an IT specialist who gets a disease and becomes a patient. But what the patient is really expert of is what it is to be a patient. What it is every single morning to open your eyes and to, uh, to be uh, forced to live with a chronic condition. Is it really uh, something that the doctor would know? Only those who live with that can know all the specifics of the disease. They can know all the specifics of our society, of our environment, of our uh, systems, which might facilitate the patient or might be barriers and might worsen the results. So the expertise of a patient is being a patient. Don't expect from them things that are not, uh, um, uh, not appropriate and uh, uh, not uh, something that the patient should know and should be doing. Simply take this knowledge of being a patient. Then 
we start talking about patient centricity. We define this as uh, the patient not only being involved into something, but being part of the creation process. So uh, centricity is not that the patient stays in the center and everyone pointing uh, with, uh, um, with a finger to the patient and telling the patient what uh, he needs to do, but actually putting the patient being part of the creation and being part of the solution. Nowadays, and the modern concept about patient's involvement and finding um, uh, really uh, solutions that work well is that everything should be even patient driven. So how can we make sure that we not only talk about patient's involvement, not talk about patient's interests, but we start doing it. And when we do it, and uh, we have the patients in our advisory boards, we have the patients in our development teams, can we make sure that they are there, but they have a clear voice and that at the end, they are those who drive the change. They are those who will set the endpoints. They are those who will tell us what really matters for them. So we make sure that we provide the, um, the, the right technical solutions that will really change lives of people. So this is the so-called patient-driven technology. Are you aware of such patient-driven technologies? Luckily, I'm aware of several of those, uh, and hopefully in the next months and years, we will see more and more technologies that meet the five A's criteria and that involve patients from the very beginning, from the concept to the end. Don't do the mistake to involve the patient at the end when you have developed something that is either not relevant or not accessible or not affordable or not appropriate. Make sure that the patients are part of the development since the concept. Together with them, create this concept. Together with them, identify where the hurdles. Together with them, develop the technology test it together with them and implement it and scale it together with them. This is the recipe for making the perfect technology. And hopefully the science someday would come to a point when the perfect technology would be capable not only to, uh, to guide you uh, through the entire process of being a patient, but being capable to actually treat you and make you being a normal person without a disease. Там говори Витамин, твоят здравен асистент. Време е за лекарствата ти. Моля, вземи две бели капсули от червената опаковка на нощното ти шкафче. This was an incredible example. This is a technology developed and driven by patients. And this was actually the voice of Alexa talking in Bulgarian language. A startup in my country uh, which is owned by a foundation where I'm involved, started developing voice technologies uh, that are supposed to uh, be helping patients, especially vulnerable patients and those who cannot work with computers and uh, smartphones, elderies, or people who are, for example, with dem dementia. What is more natural? than your voice. So this technology currently reminded me that I need to take my pills, which are just next to my uh, bed and have white color in red package. So hopefully this uh, soon uh, uh, would be available for many different languages, regardless whether Amazon is planning to work in these languages or not. I do believe that technologies need to be available for every patient that needs them. And actually, uh, this technology was created by the Admin Foundation. For those of you who wonder what is admin and how it comes, this is a picture from a, a very old script of the Bible, a Bulgarian script of the Bible. And this is the oldest written script that we have using the at sign back in 13th century. So for that reason, the foundation is called Admin or Amin Foundation. Thanks a lot 
and let us really do the perfect technology aiming.